this is Jess and today we're going to be talking to you about how to compress an image. Images very often take up a large amount of space due to the fact that they have crystal clear detail. This makes it difficult to store and transmit the image. What if we don't need all that detail? What if we simply want to be able to recognise what the image is? Consider this grayscale photo. We can assign a number between 0 and 1 to each individual pixel, relating to how bright it is, with 0 being for a completely black pixel <laughs> and 1 being for a completely white pixel. We obtain a huge rectangular matrix like this. Obviously this will be done by a computer. In order to decide what data we can get rid of from this matrix, we're going to need to decompose it into three smaller matrices using what is called the singular value decomposition of a matrix, or the SVD for short. Let's call this matrix A. We can decompose this matrix into the form U, sigma, and V transpose where U and V are orthogonal matrices which means that they preserve the length and shape of anything they act upon and sigma is a diagonal matrix which means it has entries on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else so you've decomposed A into three factors that look like this it's possible to decompose any matrix into this form this is an extremely useful and interesting result developed by many of the greatest mathematical minds of the 19th and 20th centuries it's today we're going to use this form to compress an image, but it has many other uses, from signalling to computer sciences and even politics. So what you're probably thinking now is, what's so useful about writing this matrix in this form? The answer to this question lies in the entries of the diagonal matrix sigma here. The entries are all non-negative real numbers, which are, which are called the singular values, and they're arranged in descending order, so the largest entries at the top and the smaller and more insignificant entries are positioned towards the bottom. This is a really important feature of the SVD, as it allows us to see what data is insignificant enough for us to disregard. We first have to decide how much space we want our image to take up. Since this image here is 384 by 386 <laughs> pixels, it, takes, it has over 148,000 entries. Now let's say we only want our image to have, I'll well, say, less than 2,500 entries. If you remove all but the first three singular values in sigma and their corresponding vectors in U and V, we obtain an SVD like this. This has less than 2,500 entries. So obviously this is taking a lot less space than 148,000 entries. However, if we look at the image now, it's hardly recognisable. The problem is we've removed too much of the data and now it's useless. To rectify this, we need to look back to our original SVD. And this time, instead of deleting, uh, instead of retaining just three singular values, we'll try keeping 33. This is going to take up a lot more space, as you'd expect, at around 25,000 numbers. However, the new image now looks like this. This is of satisfactory quality and it's actually not that different to the original as you can see. However, it takes up not even 20% of the space that the original image took up. So we successfully compressed our image into something that is, can be easily stored and transmitted but is of satisfactory quality. So to summarise, to compress our image we first converted it into a matrix and then we wrote it in this particular form called the SVD and then finally we were able to quickly and easily disregard however much uh, data we wanted to. Unfortunately we don't, we're unable at this time, due to time, to 
show you how to find these matrices. However, if you're interested in finding this out and more, we both recommend taking matrix analysis next semester. It's a good course and you get given chocolate in my last lecture. Thanks for listening.